Today, we're uh, unearthing some really compelling stuff around the latest Linux kernel, 6.14. And specifically, how it's integrating into Proxmox virtual environment, PVE. Right, PVE. And for anyone building or you know managing a home lab, this release has sparked a lot of excitement. People are looking to optimize those setups. It really has. Yeah. Our mission, sort of, for this deep dive is to pull out the most significant performance breakthroughs and also unpack the practical wisdom coming straight from the home lab community about kernel 6.14. Okay. We've gone through online tech discussions, uh, user testimonials, even the official Linux kernel change logs. The source itself. Exactly. All to give you a, well, a concise but pretty comprehensive understanding of why this particular release is generating so much positive noise, why it feels like a jackpot for some. Okay, so just to set the stage quickly for anyone maybe newer to this, Proxmox. It's the super versatile open source virtualization platform. Built on Debian. Built on Debian, right. And it relies heavily, I mean heavily, on the Linux kernel to manage everything. VMs, containers, the lot. Yeah. <laughs> and that's precisely why kernel updates are such a big deal. They're not just minor tweaks. They promise, you know, new hardware drivers, better compatibility, performance boosts. Yeah, the whole package. And kernel 6.14, which rolled out as an opt-in upgrade, seems to be delivering some real tangible rewards for users already. He does. So let's just jump right into what people are actually experiencing out there. We heard from one home lab user uh, running a pretty serious setup, high-end Ryzen 9 7900. Whoa. Yeah, 128 gigs of RAM on an Abai 670E motherboard. That's cutting edge stuff. Definitely. Now, their previous kernel, 6.8, just didn't fully support some of the motherboard features, specifically the onboard Bluetooth. A common headache. Right. But here's where 6.14 comes in. After upgrading, they could easily pass through that Bluetooth directly to their Home Assistant VM. Ah, hardware pass-through. Nice. Exactly. Giving the VM direct access, bypassing the host OS, and this user, they actually said it's been 1,000% rock solid on a server that runs 24-7. And that stability, I mean, that's absolutely critical, especially when you're counting on your home lab for everyday stuff or, you know, demanding workloads. Totally. What's fascinating here, and the online discussions really back this up, mm -hmm. is that 6.14 seems to be delivering that reliability consistently. Yeah. This Bluetooth success, for example, it's likely a direct result of 6.14's updated Bluetooth stack. Mm -hmm. It includes improved drivers for like a wider range of modern chipsets. Ah, oh, okay. Addressing those long-standing compatibility issues that, well, previous kernels just struggled with sometimes. That makes total sense. It's not just getting it to work, it's working reliably. And we've seen that echoed quite a bit. Another user, they were running an AMD Ryzen AI PC thin client. Oh, interesting. One of those compact AI focused machines. Exactly. They reported literally zero issues after upgrading to 6.14 and integrating it into their Proxmox cluster. Everything just worked. Okay. Pass through, cluster management, flawless. Indeed. And, you know, for folks running modern AMD hardware, kernel 6.14 brings in improved P state coordination, specifically with the Zen 4 architecture. Okay. What does that mean in practice? Well, it optimizes how the CPU cores manage their power states and frequency scaling. So better idle power consumption, potentially snappier performance bursts. Right. Which is really useful when you're running varied workloads or maybe experimenting with resource-heavy stuff like uh, large language model inference. Running AI models locally. Exactly. Running those big AI models right on your server. That kind of optimization really contributes to that no issues experience people are reporting, even under diverse loads. It's really compelling to hear about such smooth sailing, and it's not just one or two isolated cases, right? No, seems pretty consistent. We've seen this positive feedback from others who've been running 6.1 form for months, no hiccups. Mm. One user tested it with the Proxmox VE9 beta, described it as, great, no bugs during their week-long trial. Another one, on a Ryzen 7 7800X setup, reported consistently smooth performance across their VMs. And what's really interesting is how it's expanding hardware compatibility. Yeah. Even users with less common hardware, like a 5-gig PCI Ethernet NIC, you know one of those faster network cards? Uh, the multi-gig ones? Found that 6.14 just included the necessary drivers, made their setup sing, unlocked network performance that older kernels just couldn't deliver without extra work. And that broad driver inclusion, that's a huge win, especially if you have specific hardware needs. But um, this does raise an important point about the upgrade process itself. Ah, right. It's not always straightforward. Exactly. Yeah. While these successes really highlight the power of 6.14, not every story is a simple victory lap for existing systems. 
<laughs> we saw some users sharing cautionary tales, risks involved when upgrading a system you rely on. Like what? Well, one home labber talked about a failed attempt, moving from an older kernel to 6.14, and unfortunately, it left their system unable to boot. Yeah. They had to go into recovery mode, stick with their last working kernel. Eventually, they just opted for a fresh install and noted it worked all the time after that. So what does this mean for you then if you're thinking about making the jump? While 6.14 is clearly powerful, that experience suggests it's maybe not a guaranteed perfect fit for every single existing setup right away. Precisely. Especially complex or heavily customized ones. Uh -huh. And Proxmox themselves, their official recommendation is actually a fresh install for this kernel on critical systems. They don't officially support in-place upgrades for this specific kernel version in PVE8 context. Right. However, there is a safety net. As one user pointed out, if it somehow fails, you can always roll back. Okay, how? Huh? This refers to the GRUB bootloader. That's the menu you often see when your computer starts up. It usually lets you choose the previous kernel version. It acts as a fallback. Gotcha. So while a fresh install seems to be the, let's say, the golden ticket for many to avoid headaches, that GRUB option does make experimenting a lot less daunting for those willing to give it a try on an existing system. That's a really crucial point about managing the risk. Okay, so connecting this back to the bigger picture. Beyond the user stories, what specific technical advancements in 6.14 are really driving all this positivity? Well, digging into the official Linux kernel change logs, and you can easily find these online with a quick search, reveals some significant architectural improvements. Like? For instance, 6.14 has seen enhancements to iRing. That's an asynchronous I.O. interface. It can dramatically improve disk performance for virtual machines by cutting down CPU overhead. So faster disk access for VMs? Much faster reads and writes, potentially. Invaluable for things like database servers, file storage, you name it. Additionally, there's improved Virtuo GPU support. Ah, graphics. Yeah, benefits GPU pass-through scenarios, virtualized desktops, maybe even late gaming VMs. These are just generic tweaks. They're targeted optimizations that directly impact virtualization efficiency. And for anyone running multiple VMs or containers, that efficiency boost is, well, music to their ears. The kernel's better handling of pass-through for devices like Bluetooth or those GPUs we mentioned, critical. Definitely. Especially if you want to virtualize everything from smart home hubs to maybe AI training environments and the inclusion of drivers for those five gig and ICs. A small thing maybe, but really significant for people with limited PCIe slots, avoids manual driver hassles. Right. These kinds of forward-looking optimizations make 6.14 pretty compelling if you're experimenting with newer tech. And the widespread positive feedback we're seeing, it reminds us that even though the changelogs don't always explicitly list every single Proxmox-specific improvement, the community experience is pretty clear. 6.14's stability and compatibility make it a solid foundation. Yeah. For those diving into, say, LLM, inference, or other compute-heavy tasks, these subtle but powerful kernel optimizations could very well mean faster processing, lower latency. Hmm. The discussion online isn't just about specs. It's about that shared sense of achievement, people pushing their home systems further. And that's classic home lab culture, isn't it? The real thrill is when the system just works, letting you focus on the fun projects. Even the... Uh... Less glowing reviews seem to carry some optimism. The user who rolled back to VE 8.4 after beta issues, they noted that community scripts have since been updated for VE 9, suggests the ecosystem is catching up. That collaborative spirit is key. Users sharing fixes, workarounds, pointing each other to resources like the Linux change logs. That's what makes the home lab community so vibrant. It's not just the tech. It's the people sharing discoveries. Absolutely. So let's wrap this up. Bringing our deep dive to a close, is Linux kernel 6 by one form the right move for your Proxmox setup? Wow. The online consensus seems to lean heavily toward yes, especially if you're after better hardware support, chasing improved performance, or maybe doing a fresh install anyway. Yeah. It's noted stability, those updated drivers, the virtualization optimizations, it really make it a compelling choice for anyone in the home lab space right now. But, and this is important, you got to approach the upgrade with that nuanced perspective we talked about. Mm -hmm. If your system is mission critical or heavily customized, yeah, yeah. remember those cautionary tales. Mm -hmm. Proxmox's official recommendation for a fresh install in critical systems, worth considering carefully. But if you do decide to experiment on an existing setup, remember GRUB. That bootloader is your safety net. Let's you roll back. Good reminder. And for the absolute deepest dive, the official Linux kernel changelogs are always there. A fantastic resource 
right at your fingertips. For me, what really stands out is that this kernel 6.14, it feels like more than just a technical update. It seems to be a catalyst, you know, enabling enthusiasts to push their home labs further. Mm -hmm. Whether you're doing that Bluetooth password at Home Assistant or experimenting with those cutting edge AI workloads or just aiming for that rock solid 247 server, this kernel is proving itself a reliable partner. It really is. And the collective sort of victory we're seeing in the community feedback, it reminds you that in this dynamic world of home labbing, every kernel upgrade is genuinely a fresh chance, a chance to innovate, optimize, maybe even hit the jackpot with a setup that's just faster, smoother, more capable than before. A nice thought to end on. So maybe take a moment to think, what could these new capabilities in kernel 6.14 actually unlock in your own home lab adventure? What projects could this finally bring to life for you?